One of those institutions that he's referring to is called Fairmount Behavioral Health Systems. It's right outside of Philly, and I know this because I was there when he was there. And like, it's no coincidence that this is the first video I saw when I woke up this morning. I, I, I want to talk about this. I want to talk to you about the things that he did not discuss in that interview that I know and I personally like bore witness to. So when I got to Fairmount, it was July of 2016. Um, Colin and I were not in the same unit or block. I was 16, I believe he was like 12 or 13, and we shared like a common courtyard area. So it was on like my second day that I was at Fairmount that I'm outside and I see Colin playing basketball and I turn to like one of the people that's in my unit with me and I'm like, is that a game Goslin kid in this facility with us? And this person that was in my unit that I talked to, they had been there for like a couple of months at that point. So um, he proceeded to tell me that when I got to uh, Fairmount, Colin had already been there for like over 90 days at that point. And, you know, we are allowed to have visitors and people, you know, your family and loved ones come to visit and support you, you know, during this time. Colin had spent 90 days at that point and Kate had not even come a single time to visit him. And it's just such a contrast from like what my situation was because I had at least one parent come every single day while I was there going through this. Colin did not have any of that. He was isolated, alone, and had, when I got there, was already there for over three months with no support and no visitors. And Colin uses the word scary to describe, like, his experience at Fairmount. I, I've never been to prison, but I would imagine that my time at Fairmount is what prison would feel like. I remember waking up at, like, three in the morning to the alarm system of the facility going off because one of the patients was trying to like kill a nurse we hear these alarms and stuff going off and it was honestly for a young me was terrifying i cannot imagine being 12 years old and going through that shit and that's just the part that astounds me that colin was able to make it through that because again kate was refusing to tell john where he was and on top of that she's not giving colin the support and visitations that he needs to be able to like make it through this time in his life Okay, here's part two. The Colin and I were not in the same uh, block, but we had the common outside shared area. So during the times of the day, we were allowed to go outside. And that's where I got to speak to him, like very briefly. Um, within 30 seconds of me like talking to him, he could just tell that I knew exactly who he was. And I was talking to him in a way that's like not an introduction, rather, I know exactly who you are. And I'm more just trying to figure out like why you are here with us right now. And I really just feel for him in that sense because like, you know, the counselors that we are working with, the people that work at the facility, the people that are in our blocks with us, like our age group, we all knew who he was. So he doesn't get to go through this experience, you know, remaining anonymous, just being some kid, you know, my name's Colin. It's, you are a Goslin kid and you, you know, we all know that your mom has not come to visit you and it's being discussed amongst like our whole like unit. I definitely do think it is worth mentioning, you know, of course, we don't have access to our like phones or any of our personal devices, but um, I would assume Colin's block was the same. Uh, we had the TV in our block and our TV had TLC on it. So, you know, we were able to watch Kate filming the 80th spinoff of the show while her son is literally like in this facility with us. And, you know, like... I just, I wonder, like, the part of me just wonders, like, did he see that? Like, did, was he able to turn on the TV, watch his siblings, you know, in living their life while he is stuck in here with, again, no support, no visits, like, you know, and if Kate, if Kate did not want to visit him, at least let the father do it because he is alone and isolated. So I had came and left Fairmount in July of 2016. I was not there for that long. Similar to Colin's situation, I was there and I should not have been. So I was released because, you know, the people that I worked with, you know, the counselors and stuff, they basically just told me, like, you know, there are people who need inpatient, you know, help. And there are people who need outpatient. You need outpatient. So I was released. I got to go home. And I think it was... And I'm going to ask that someone just try to look up this article up and see, you know, I remember August or September 2016 being at home and seeing, like, uh, one of those newspaper, or one of the magazines that you see in a grocery store, it's basically Kate talking about because the question's being asked. You know, you're filming your show with all your seven other children, and one is missing. Where is Colin? And she goes on in this interview to say, you know, Colin's at the facility. He's getting the treatment that he needs. Da 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 da. All Colin needed was his mom to come visit him or just someone in his family just to support him, and he needs to get out of there. And she did not do that. And instead, she went to the public and just told them that he was getting the help that he need without telling them that she is doing nothing to be that help for him and instead just pushing him away. So Kate does this interview where she says, you know, Colin is at a facility getting help that he needs. 
And not too long after that, I think maybe it was like a couple weeks, maybe a couple months after that, John does an interview and John is saying, um, Kate is refusing to tell me where our son is and I've been actively searching for him, but it is to no avail. Like she refuses to tell me where he's at. And this is all like, this is connected because I'm from the Reading area. Like I, I was born and raised in Reading. Um, the Goslins are in the Berks County area. So, you know, anyone that is from Reading or the area that I'm from, if you're from Southeastern PA period, like you know of this family, you know, kind of like where they're from and stuff. John does this interview where he says that he doesn't know where his son is. And, um, I even still, like, I feel a lot of now knowing everything that we know now, this interview and everything just makes me feel very guilty because, um, I did for a very long time, um, because I knew where he, I knew how to get in contact with him. I had this thing where I wanted to tell him where Colin was. I wanted to like write a letter, put it in his mailbox and be like, he is at Fairmount right now and he needs help, like please. But I just never knew like how that kind of would unfold. Like if that would just kind of like balloon things into a storm. Um, but I definitely like, because I was able to see Colin at the facility and then read the article that was released right the fuck after I left, I just knew the story that was being told to the public was not the same as the one, you know, this child was suffering and he was not getting any support that, you know, he desperately, desperately needed during that time in his life. And then mind you, like, again, this is just all, I think it's, I'm like shaking right now because just like, I left July of 2016. If you look and pause that interview at the letters that he sent John to help like rescue him, the date on it is June 21st, 2017. All the things that I experienced in my less than a week at Fairmount, he experienced for a year and a half. And it just blows my mind 